I now give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Mohammad Hanef Atmar, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Afghanistan. Thank you. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Madam President, Excellencies, and dear colleagues, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good morning and good afternoon. Madam President, I would like to thank you for hosting and presiding over this open debate on the situation in Afghanistan and for Estonia's effective and able stewardship of the Council during the month of June. Participation of ministers from capitals and the distinguished participants today. I would also like to thank the UN Sec Secretary General for his report and the SRSG, Deborah Lyons, for her thorough briefing today. Allow me to also add my gratitude to UNAMA for their tireless work at a critical time in Afghanistan. Finally, I thank Ms. Ismail Wali, the Executive Director of the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crimes, and the other briefers today for their expert interventions. Madam President, we meet at an inflection point in Afghanistan's history. It's a time that has created hope, but also fear and concern for the future. Hope for achieving a sustainable peace after four decades of imposed war and fear of falling back into a continued protracted conflict. We are at a time that underscores the critical interdependence between Afghanistan's peace and security and regional and international security and stability. A regression into a protracted conflict pursued by the Taliban in collaboration with a number of UN-designated trans transnational terrorist networks that maintain a symbiotic relationship with, with transnational narcotics and organized crimes will pose a serious threat, not only to Afghanistan, but also to our neighbors, the region, and the international community as a whole. This is certainly not an outcome to be accepted after two decades of enormous sacrifices in blood and treasure by Afghans and our international partners. Profoundly appreciating your sacrifices and support over the past two decades, we, the government and people of Afghanistan, are committed to continue to work with our international and regional partners, not to let our joint sacrifices go in vain and work to achieve our shared goal of peace, security and prosperity. Madam President, the utmost desire and aspiration of all Afghans weary of war and ongoing bloodshed is the achievement of a lasting peace and a permanent end to the conflict. We know that this desire is equally shared by all of you, our international and regional partners, members of the United Nations and its Security Council. All of us have welcomed the Doha Peace Agreement signed by the United States and the Taliban in February 2020. The UN Security Council unanimously adopted Resolution 2513 to welcome it and express its support for its full implementation. We are grateful to the UN Security Council for doing so and to all of our international and regional partners for supporting the Afghanistan's peace process. In good faith, the United States and our NATO partners have met almost all of their obligations in the agreement, including the withdrawal of their troops to be completed in the coming weeks. We, the government of Afghanistan, were not party to the Doha peace agreement. But to respond positively to the shared desire of our people and the international community, we released over 6,000 of Taliban prisoners, constituted all necessary institutions to support the peace process, including an inclusive team of peace negotiation, and engaged in good faith with the Taliban for peace. 
However, it's a sad reality, Madam President, that the Taliban have not honored any of their obligations under the Doha Peace Agreement. First, they have not kept ties with international terrorism. They are hosting and aiding not only Al-Qaeda, but also regional terrorist groups such as LAT, TTP, ATIM, and IMU in pursuit of their violent campaign against both Afghanistan and other countries. This is well documented by the recent reports of the United Nations sanction monitoring team, as well as many other state and international agencies. Second, the Taliban agreed to reduce violence and work with the government of Afghanistan to achieve a permanent and comprehensive ceasefire. Under the watchful eyes of the international community, our people have witnessed only the worst violence of the past two decades since the signing of the Doha Peace Agreement, and especially since the announce announcement by the United States and NATO of their troops' withdrawal. The massacre of schoolboys in Logar, schoolgirls in West Kabul, deminers in the north, and vaccinators in the east over the past weeks are just some examples of the senseless violence inflicted by Taliban and their associates. The Taliban said that they were fighting the presence of foreign troops in Afghanistan, but they need to explain to the world community as to why they are killing their fellow Afghans, and especially civilians, while the foreign troops are leaving the country now. Third, it was also the Taliban's obligation based on the agreement to enter into negotiation with the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan and reach a political settlement. The President of the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan has proposed, in good faith, a peace plan for ceasefire, power sharing, and early elections to ensure that the future of Afghanistan is determined by the free will of the Afghan people, men and women alike. For almost 10 months now, we have had no serious engagement from the Taliban for serious peace negotiation and no response to our proposed peace plan and absolutely no counter-proposal. The five host countries, Qatar, Norway, Germany, Indonesia, and Uzbekistan, as well as the United Nations and Turkey have witnessed this lack of commitment and progress and the rejection of the proposed peace conference in Istanbul. While the Taliban have shown, shown no positive response to any peace plan as yet, the government and people of Afghanistan are deeply grateful to all of our regional and international partners for their continued commitment and support. Madam President, in a couple of weeks, the foreign troops' withdrawal will be completed and the international community will unfortunately see for itself that the Taliban will not have met any of their obligations under the Doha Peace Agreement. The situation calls for a serious review and assessment as to where we, as the international community, are with the peace process. There must be respect for the Doha Peace Agreement and the UN Security Council's Resolution 2513, and there must be accountability and appropriate response. To achieve our shared goal of peace, the Islamic Republic of Afghanistan humbly proposes the following two measures. First, the Islamic Republic, Republic of Afghanistan remains fully committed to the peace process and will continue to engage the Taliban negotiating team in Doha. We fully support the role of the United Nations, including that of UNAMA and the Secretary General's personal envoy in peace process and regional cooperation. We therefore call on the international community and our regional partners to use their influence to persuade the Taliban to honor their obligations under the Doha Peace Agreement. The establishment of a nationwide ceasefire to allow the government of Afghanistan and the international community to meet 
the immediate humanitarian priorities as a result of the pandemic, the conflict, and the unfolding drought should be a top priority for our international diplomacy to achieve through the third round of the peace talks in Doha expected to begin soon. Second, a monitoring mechanism should be established by the international community to verify the implementation of the Doha Peace Agreement and the UN Security Council's Resolution 2513. The UN Security Council will be expected to review the implementation of the obligations under the Doha Peace Agreement and the Resol Resolution 2513 and to take appropriate measures to ensure compliance. Madam President, to conclude, it is no doubt that the senseless violence and the refusal of the Taliban to honor their obligations have made the situation in Afghanistan and our region precarious and dangerously unstable. It is our strong belief, however, that we, if we work together as the international community of the United Nations and commit the necessary resources for the implementation of the Doha Peace Agreement and Resolution 2513, we can arrest this threatening situation and achieve a lasting peace, security, and prosperity for all of us. I thank you all, Madam President. I thank His Excellency Mr. Atmar for his statement.